First example of finding out the deflection in the beam by double integration method. As we already discussed in step 1, we find out the generalized moment equation for the beam. Let's just take a revision of the steps for double integration method. Applying these steps to the beam for solution. The generalized moment equation would be like for cutting the last section here. The free body diagram of the structure would be let's consider this distance as x. This distance would be since this is 10 feet, this distance is x minus 10 feet. This distance would be x minus 20 feet. And this distance is ultimately x minus 30 feet. As we already discussed that the section where we cut moment is anti-clockwise and shear is downward. The reactions were already found as 150 kips. And here it is 150. Again, since it is a symmetric structure, we sum up the action forces and divide them into two. Gives us the reaction forces. The moment it is rotating anti-clockwise, the first 100 kip force is also rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So it would it having a moment arm of x minus 30 feet. And the second load again rotating in anti-clockwise direction about this point x minus 20. And the third load again rotating in anti-clockwise direction. Minus 10 feet. And this 150 kilonewton tips force is having a lever arm of x 150 into x. The sign is negative as it is tending to rotate this point or the beam as clockwise direction. So the generalized moment equation would be. plus 150x minus 100x minus 30 minus 100x minus 20 minus 100x minus 10 we know that integral of the moment will give us the value of rotation So integrating the above equation will give us E i theta is equal to 75 x. plus c1 let's name this as equation number one we know that delta is equal to integral of e i theta d x so integrating this equation for delta will yield 75x cube over 3 minus 50x minus 30 cube over 3. It's just simple integration.
but just don't multiply the terms by x within the bracket it is one of the rules of double integration method minus 100 oh This is the second equation, double integration method. Now solving for P1 and P2. This requires the boundary condition. We know that at x is equals to 0, Deflection is equals to zero. Putting these values in equation number two, we get C2 is equals to zero. Right. Now, we know that deflection at x is equals to 40 feet, 10 feet, 20, 30, and 40. At x is equals to 40 feet, deflection is again zero. So putting this value and these two values in equation number 2, we get P1 as minus 25,000. Substituting the values of C1 and C2 in the equation with unknown C1 and C2, we will get the final deflection equation as 75x cube over 3 minus 50x minus 30 cube over 3 50x minus 20 cube over 3 minus 50x minus 10 cube over 3 here in terms in place of c1 we get the value of 25,000x minus sign was placed as c1 was negative already so we were required to find out the deflection at x is equals to 20 put in this equation here 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 and here and here we get a deflection of value of 3 1 6 6 6 6 over ei in fit since we use the value of x in fit, so the deflection value is also in fit. Overall deflection value will always be in fit here. Since we use the value of x in fit, it is very important point. And the minus sign indicates that the deflection is downward. For illustration and more clear understanding, you can always draw this at 20 feet. The required deflection is my C1666 over EI. Similarly, we can find out the theta at this point by substituting the value of c1 and c2 in the equation of theta and putting the value of x as 20 feet but it was not required in the question oh x and putting x value as 0 feet but it was not required in the question so no need thanks for watching